Am I in frame? I don't know. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to Cat Talks. My name is Cat, and this is the place where I talk all about books and writing. Today I'll be discussing all of the books that I will read in February 2020. But first I need to tell you a story. So as you might know at the beginning of the year I set myself the resolution to read 19 books from 2019 and so at the beginning of the year I thought I would reserve two or three of those books so that I could read them you know in January and they didn't come so I thought okay no problem I'll reserve another two surely they're not all super popular you know 2019 releases surely some people read them in 2019 but those two I ordered again didn't come so now I had five reserved and I was like, okay, I'll order a couple more for February because I don't have anything to read in February. And since it's taking such a long time for these to come, it'll probably take the same, you know, for the next lot. So then I'll have about a month in between to read them all. Well, that isn't quite what happened. And I got eight of my reservations on the same day. <laughs> so I have a lot of reading to do. So as I said, I have a huge number of books. <laughs> Can't even lift them up. I have a huge number of books out from the library this month that most of these need to go back because I wasn't the last person who reserved them and some of them they only gave me until the 8th of February to return so I have some reading to get done. The first giant and orange book that I picked up was Stephen King's The Outsider, picked up from the pile, not from the library, was Stephen King's The Outsider. Now I actually reserved this because I saw the trailer for it on YouTube and it looked really interesting so I thought I might watch the series but more importantly I kind of want to read the book. Now if I did read this, this would be I think my first Stephen King that isn't his on writing, so my first Stephen King fiction, which would be super exciting, so you know, let's see if I like it, let's see if I like horror, because I've never really read any horror, uh, but this one is about the murder of, uh, it's about a murder, sorry, and the main suspect, evidence ties him to the crime, but eyewitnesses tie him to a place very far away and so it's about how can something happen in two places or how can someone be in two places at once. <laughs> then we have the super hyped Lee Bardugo's Ninth House. Lee, Lee, Lee Bardugo, Lee Bardugo was obviously the author of the Grisha verse trilogy and duology or duology and book, I don't know. She's written a lot of books in a fantasy world where um, if you have a magical power you get sent off to a school and she and the main character of that series discovered her power quite late in life and was kind of kidnapped. In this series it's set more in the modern day so it's an urban fantasy set now and it uh, centres around this young boy who gets a scholarship to go to university as long as he spies on this secret society possibly of magicians. There I have been told there are a lot of content warnings in this one so beware if you are triggered by certain themes definitely look up the contents of this book. But I'm excited to read it in February. It's also quite chunky and the text is quite small so I've already got my work cut out for me. But I'm going to read these in the order that the library wants them back so yeah. Then we have Safi's Tell Me How You Really Feel. This was one of the books I talked about in my library hall and this is a female to female enemies to lovers romance so I'm really excited. <laughs> I love a good LGBTQ book because I myself am by. So it's, it's lovely to see some representation out there in the world, in the library, which is why I picked this one up. I should say what it's about more than just the uh, AO3 tags, shouldn't I? Yeah. yeah. So this is about a film director who, uh, sorry, two students, a film student and a cheerleader. They, the film student sort of asked out the cheerleader. No, sorry. The cheerleader asked out the film student when they were younger and she meant it, but the film student, who was a bit of a geek, thought that this was a troll by the more popular cheerleader, a prank, and so they hate each other now. In fact, the rejection was so bad that the cheerleader actually went back into the closet because of this. So she's not, you know, she's not the biggest fan of the film, the film student. However, for the film student's final project, she really needs the cheerleader to play the main character because she's the only one that will fit the plot of the film that they're making. So they are going to be forced to spend some time together taking each other's orders. If you didn't know, I used to act not in films but in, um, in amateur dramatic plays, so I'm really excited to see what, it's, what the book does with acting. Then luckily we have a super short book and that's The Test by Sylvain Newell. This book is about the British citizenship test in a near future dystopia. Something tragic happens and obviously then the test is compromised. So you're not supposed to know much going into this and I'm not going to find out anymore. It's a super short book so it would probably be super easy to spoil it. So do not spoil. No spoilers in the comments. 
Then we have Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. This is another LGBTQ romance. I don't know what I'm doing with the contemporary romances this month. The son of the Queen of England and the son of the, pri of the President of the United States, kind of like hating each other and becoming lovers. So uh, yeah, uh, another enemies to lovers romance, I suspect. Just flooding my TBR with enemies to lovers to see if I like that genre, apparently. That's what this one is about. I'm looking forward to some comedy. Uh, I've heard mixed reviews on this one. I've heard people who love it. I've heard people who thought it was a bit overhyped. So we will see. Then we have Ali Smith's Autumn. I really, I heard about Ali Smith when she brought out Spring, which is about Brexit and was recently published. And so I really wanted to check this out and check out her writing style. I've heard that she's very evocative and lyrical with her writing style. So I wanted to see whether I would enjoy reading her work. So that is why we have this one. It has a lot of empty pages in it, so hopefully it won't take too long to read. <laughs> These are all contemporary so far. No, wait, they're not. Horror, fantasy, sci-fi. And um, this might be like dystopian. I don't know, I don't know if it's sci-fi. Then we have the next two books in Terry Pratchett's The Discworld series. I don't need to say much about these. They are fantasy set in a world which is born on the back of four elephants riding on top of a giant sea turtle. So it's all ridiculous, it's all fun. I believe in Mort, um, Death wants to retire, so he hires a guy called Mort to like learn his job. A boy called Mort. And sorcery? Don't know what that one's about. Let's see what, let's see what it's about by reading it, I guess. Then we have the super popular Holly Black's The Cruel Prince. This is about a woman whose siblings are half fae. So the prince of Fadum um, kind of abducts the whole family when their mum dies and she's forced to grow up in the fae kingdom. Uh, fae was super popular during the span of years I wasn't reading, so I'm intrigued to find out what's going on in this series. It is super popular and beloved. Um, it's a YA fantasy kind of romance with some intrigue and political drama. So, you know, it's the in thing. But um, yeah, I kind of, I do want to read this. I've never read anything by Holly Black, so this is a month of firsts for me. And I've, yeah, I don't think I've read that many Fae books either. Then we have Sebastian Castell's Traitor's Blade. I picked this up on a whim. Um, this is about the last of the great coats who were charged by the king to uphold justice in the land. And the kingdom's gone to shit in a handbasket and nothing's going right, so. The great coats kind of like don't exist anymore, except for this one guy who wants to go around creating something beautiful from what exists. And that's all I know. Um, Sebastian Castells is supposed to be an amazing writer. Again, I've never read anything by him before, so we will see. And my last book from the library that needs to be back by the end of February is Neil Gaiman's Trigger Warning. This is a collection of short stories written by Neil Gaiman. Um, obviously, probably a bit of fantasy set in our worlds, a bit of urban or portal fantasies, because that is what. Neil Gaiman tends to write, but I am intrigued to see how his work stands up in short story form and also get some tips for writing my own short stories. Whew. So that is it for library books. I also have one owned book that I'm definitely going to read and that is Brotslick Sherlek by Emily Zola. I have no idea what this book is. This was one of the easy to read Swedish books that I picked up in the library when they did their book sale in April of last year and it's very short. It's all in Swedish and I'm kind of like trying to use up all of the easy read Swedish books so that I can graduate onto uh, short stories and novels in Swedish. So that is 12 physical books, but I am still trying out Kindle Unlimited. So I've been making a list of all of the Kindle Unlimited books that I want to borrow after my current borrows are out because I'm such a nerd that I need a list of free books that I want to read after my list runs out. But I'm going to take you through those now. So the first book that I want to read is Nexus Book 2, which is called The Crux. This first book of this series by Ramiz Nam. Ramiz Naz. Ramez Nez. I'm really sorry. It's not in front of me, but it's right here for you guys. Um, this book is the, se the first book in this series is about a young research student who is kind of playing around with microbots in the brain to set an operating system on the brain that he can then run and the government is not very fond of this. In fact the government has put a ban on all neuroscience research for avoiding this exact purpose so when they find out that he is doing it he is forced to run for his life and get involved in some pretty shady shit. Uh, I've already said shit once in the show so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run with it I'm just allowed to swear in this episode. Then we have Wakenhurst. I don't know much about this one. It showed up on Kindle Unlimited and I grabbed it. I believe it is a kind of gothic-esque fantasy set in a big house. That's all I want to know. It's just, I'm trying to go into my books more blind, so we'll see what happens. Then I have Summer Frost. That is the second one in the Amazon uh, short story 
future collections. I think this one's by Blake Crouch, but I could be wrong. I just I just start making up author names at this point. Uh, and no idea again what this one is about. The first book in this series was by Veronica Roth. It was Ark by Veronica Roth. Uh, and that is about a young woman who is cataloging all of the plants in the world as the rest of the uh, of the rest of the humankind runs for the nearest habitable planet. These are all short stories set in the future, but they are by different authors and they're in different worlds and different visions of the future. So you can just hop in and out wherever it suits you. Uh, then we have Daughters of the Dragon. This is a, it's called a Korea Comfort Women series and it's about this woman in Korea uh, who goes back to Korea after receiving a comb when her mother dies and she wants to know more about her mother's life, I think, and finds out from this woman that she was a comfort woman. Then I'm going to finally try some Colleen Hoover and I'm going to read Regretting You. And that's it for the books that I have chosen. There will be another free Audible book, so I'm excited to read my new free Audible book. Really hoping it isn't as long as the old Curiosity Shop, because good lord that book was long. That book took like hours of my day, nearly every single day. It was something like 30 hours long. It might not be 30 hours long, I would look that up. And I would quite like to read The Witcher, the first book of The Witchers, again on audiobook. That man's voice, whoever reads The Witcher book, the first book on Audible. I'm going to put it in the comments down below his name, but he's got such a velvet voice. I was listening to it and I was like, mm, yes, I'm going to buy this book on Audible. And did you know Alan Rickman has um, three books, I think, or two books on Audible? I didn't. I found that out yesterday and I was very excited. All right, this is getting rambly. Oh, I just, I do want to say that I am trying to read more, or more of my owned books, both on the shelves here and also... Um, on Kindle and Audible and Kobo because I am building up a huge collection of owned books because I'm just buying books and then I never read them. Especially on Audible or Kindle because I don't see them. So I'm planning on reading at least three of those but I'm going to leave that up this month to chance because I have so many library books and Kindle Unlimited books to power through that I don't want to like force myself to read all of the books in the world. All right guys, thank you ever so much for stopping by at my house today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. Let me know if you have read any of the books I mentioned here today. I'm betting you have read Red, White and Royal Blue or possibly The Cruel Prince. I'm reckoning The Cruel Prince is gonna be one of the ones that you've read. If you have read any of these, let me know down in the comments below which one is your favorite and what you think about The Outsider, whether I should put the time in. I will speak to you guys next week with my January wrap up. So if you're interested to hear about all of the books that I read in January and my thoughts and feelings on them, just make sure you pop a uh, like down in the button, looks like this, down below, and hit that subscribe button so that you will see me next Friday with some more thoughts and opinions. Bye! Meow. Then luckily we have the shoot soup. Oh, the curse, the prince, the cursed prince. No, that's not what it's called.